Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through whole types. This is for Project Lead the Way, Introduction to Engineering Design, and we are in Lesson 5.5, which has more to do with Autodesk Inventor, or in our case Fusion 360, um, and how to create different types of holes and blocks of material. Uh, but in this case, I just want to start off with just a quick note about those different hole types and what they're actually used for. So let's start off with a countersink. A countersink is like what you see here in this PCB, this printed circuit board. And the idea is this. What if we have a machine screw and you can see that we have an angled head here? Okay, um, and there are some standard angles that those things go to, and that's probably like 82 degrees in this case. And what if I wanted this thing to actually sit down in a material that wasn't like wood, so I couldn't just sink it down by pushing really hard with the drill? What if it was like metal? Okay, how could I get that thing to sit flush with the top of a surface? And that's called a countersink. If we drilled a countersink hole, and there are materials and ways to do this, uh, excuse me, um, tools and specific methods for doing this, uh, but we create an angled surface on that actual PCB and that allows us to make the machine screw sit flush with the top without hurting the board in the process. Okay, so that's called a counter sink. We also have what are called counter bores. So if in case um, we have something that's like the socket screw on the right hand side here and we want that thing to sit flush in the top of a board rather than having an angled drill, um, what we would do is we create just a circular depression here, and that would be flush down then whenever we uh, whenever we drill into the material, okay? Obviously, that's not deep enough for the socket screw that I have. These pictures aren't necessarily related, but one is the counter bore here, okay? And we also have what's called a clearance hole, and um, a clearance hole, really, the idea is this. This picture is actually really good. You can see the countersink at the top, but you can also see here that um, let's say that I had this screw and that had the threads that went all the way up and down it, but I don't want the threads to actually grip on the work piece itself. I only want the screw to grip on the substrate, okay, the bottom piece. What I can do is I can drill a little bit bigger diameter hole here. You can see this thing's just a little bit wider on the top than it is in the bottom. And if we do that, then if we drill it just bigger than the screw, you can see here the threads don't really interact with the wood itself up here at the top. In fact, if this bottom piece wasn't existing, then I could probably take the screw and just pull it right out okay so that's a clearance hole that allows like a bolt or a screw to pass through without interacting with the material um, and and so we may you know have some uses for that as well so how to create those then in fusion 360 let's go talk about that then okay it's going to be really simple you're going to create a part for me and if you're in my class it looks like this and we're going to do a section analysis too where you can actually see aha what's on the inside right so you're going to create a clearance hole a counter bore a counter sink and a threaded hole as part of this activity 5.5 for me. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through um, the, for the first steps of the process, and then I'm going to create a series of videos after this that kind of lead you through each individual type of hole. So look for a series of videos to come. Okay, so let's start off with this here new part. Oops, start halfway through. Okay, let's go a new part, and I'm just going to create a box, and the box is going to be upright. I'm going to click here and I'm going to make that box five inches wide by one and a half inches tall. Okay. And if you're in my class, I want you to use those dimensions. If you're not, I don't care. Hit enter. And we're going to move and extrude this thing backwards, then a distance of two inches. So five by 1.5. And then the depth is two. Okay. Now, once I have that, I'm going to click on the top surface and I'm going to create a new sketch on that top surface. And I'm going to place a series of points. In fact, I'm going to use four of them. One, two, three, four. Right click and OK. Now, before I go any further, I kind of want those points to be evenly spaced and I want them to be in the middle of the part or at least close to it. So I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint. I'm going to come over and click on the first dot and I'm going to hold down shift so I can grab the midpoint right here. You see that X? I'm going to click on it. OK, that way this dot can't move up or down anymore. And I'm going to say, well, now this one needs to be horizontally aligned with the first one. This is with the second one. And this is with the third one. So two clicks on each one of those. OK, right click and choose OK. Now you can see the dots can move left to right, but they can't move up or down. OK, now as far as placing them left to right, the reason this is five inches across is because that allows us to go and place dimensions and say, I want all of these to be one inch spacing. So I'm going to go all the way across and just say from dot to dot is one inch. And that's just going to evenly space them out for us. Okay, so now we have that. These dots can no longer move. We're going to click Stop Sketch. Now, the only thing that I'm going to show you to do how to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to do that first hole, the clearance hole. 
Okay, it's very simple. I come up here and I click Create. And I come down here to the whole tool. You'll notice, by the way, the shortcut is H. So from now on, I can use H to get the shortcut for the hole. And what I want to do then, it brings up my menu here for the holes. I want to come over here. I'm just going to click on the first dot. Okay. And right now, the hole type is selected to counterbore. It's going to remember the last one you did. So you can see that the last thing that I had done personally before starting this video was a counterbore. But I'm going to change that to just a simple hole. Okay. And this simple hole, it wants to know what is the depth of the hole, first of all. Okay. I have already gone through and changed the extent to all. Okay, now I can change it to a distance if I want to and say, you know what, I only want that thing to really go down a half inch. Okay, you can see now it's not going all the way down, right? Okay, but I can also say, you know, I want it to be 1.5. And while that's great, if the block changes thickness, if I have to come back and make a modification later on, then I want this to auto update with it, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the extent to all. Okay, the diameter of the hole, we're going to leave that as a quarter inch. The tip angle says at the bottom, like if you were drilling this out with a drill, okay, it would actually have an angled tip to the bottom. You can't just drill a flat hole, okay? Um, in fact, what, I don't change, but just look at what happens. If I do 0.75, you see how there's an angled tip at the bottom, okay? So we would leave that at 118 degrees. That's pretty standard. And in fact, in this class, you will never, ever, ever, ever change that, okay? So just always leave it. But we're going to go back here, change the extent to all. We're going to go all the way through diameter of 0.25 inches and I'm going to click OK. And you can see now that whenever this is done you now have a hole that's a quarter inch in diameter and it drills all the way through. The way that we would signify that on a drawing sheet and what you're going to turn in for me is going to be by placing a dimension on this file and I'll show you the setup of the draw file later on but it's going to say diameter of 0.25 inches and it's going to say through. So it has a diameter and it has a depth. How far into the block do we actually draw? And through, THRU, is going to be the distance for this first one. Okay, so that's good enough for the first video. I'll make another video in just a second where we'll talk about the counter bore.